in 2008 here in the Circle City of Indianapolis, Indiana. Tonight, we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Indianapolis Colts. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. They'll come out in the pistol. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. Green's got it over the middle. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. It'll be a gain of six, and that'll make it second down. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything. And sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. Sammy Coates, the intended target there. And it's third and four. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. And yeah, they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. Here's Roethlisberger. He finds Coates complete. And they get 10 yards there and convert on third. The goal of every offense is to move the chains, pick up first downs. A nice job finding an open receiver for a completion. Here's the first carry for Le'Veon Bell. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. Against the Cowboys, Bell 57 on the ground, 77 through the air, and a touchdown at each department. His versatility is so good and so strong. It's a lesson for running backs everywhere. Yeah, of course you want to carry the ball. That's your number one thing. But the ability to split out, catch passes, hurt a defense that way, allows you to pile up numbers to help your team. Now Roethlisberger, and it's caught over the middle by the tight end, Green. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big-time run, big-time pass. A one-two combination. Looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Now a first-down carry by Bell. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Give him 13 on the pick up there. And it'll give the Steelers a first down. And an electric scamper there from the second round pick in 2013 out of Michigan State. And how about the way he's remade his body in the NFL? You remember back in Michigan State, big, thick, bruising runner? Yeah, he had some speed, he had some agility, but now he's slimmed down and he's gotten even quicker, which has led to more runs like the one we just saw there. A beautiful fake. And he's brought down. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. I go all the way back to college with Le'Veon Bell, one of the better body transformations I've seen from a big, thick power back to the guy we see now who can do everything. And two years ago, of course, last year the injury, but two years ago over 1,300 yards. I think they think he can top that this year. I don't think there's any question about it. They'll run it with Williams. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. The defense won that play so fast that I think if the running back even had time to notice if anyone was there, it was just a blink of an eye, and there was a loss on the play. Williams will try again. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going to play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. They'll try and run it in with Bell. 
And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. Back with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's Steeler football to begin quarter number two. They are, however, facing a fourth down situation. And Boswell's kick is good. And the Steelers will jump out to a three-zip lead. And that field goal caps an 11-play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This will be fielded at the six. <laughs> and he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. Start on the ground with Gore. And room to run as he's up past the 35-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. I think Frank Gore runs on doubt. And what I mean is, he's 33, and everyone keeps thinking this is the end, yet he keeps going. I think something that gets overlooked, though, to your point, most rushing yards of anybody currently in the NFL. Amazing. Big time for him. To throw on second down is Locke. He's got time. Still back there. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. His tight end, Dwayne Allen, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. I wouldn't be shocked at all right now if there's a look of surprise on the big fella's face because he had the route that he wanted, running the corner. And usually, he's able to use his body and catch the football. But a really nice play by the defenders, able to knock it away. They'll try and pick up the first with Gore. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. So the run gets him the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Gore again here on first down. And he'll take this one across the 45 up to about the 46-yard line. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. And they're six yards away from picking up the first here on second down. This is Robert Turbin shedding the tackler and it gives him some room. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Robert Turbin, 53 yards. And the Colts are going to jump back in front. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Now after the touchdown, here's Pat McAfee to kick. This will be taken in at the one. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. The Steelers, they get ready to roll again on offense, and they're reeling. They're on a four-game losing streak, Charles. They were 4-1. and one. 
now four and five. What do you make of the Steelers at this point? Well, some of it comes down to health. Remember, Big Ben missed a game when he got hurt against Miami, and then they had an open week, and so he only missed the one game and came back. But his timing was off a little bit with his receivers in the next game that he played. But overall, take a look at the schedule, all right? New England was one of the losses. Dallas was one of the losses. Those are two of the better teams in the league. The ones they might regret a little bit, Miami and Baltimore. But both of those teams are playing much better in recent weeks. First play of the drive, let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher, a really nice run. Second down following the run. On second down, Roethlisberger. Oh, he tried to pitch it, and the ball's loose. And they have the football, and will set up shop at the 33-yard line. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. And it's a unit last drive that did it all on the ground, Charles. And they controlled it from the interior, big on big, right? Offensive lineman versus defensive lineman. But you know, in order to keep the football moving downfield, other people have to get involved as well. Your wide receivers, your tight ends, lead runners, anything that you have possible to get in front and keep the ball moving. And now the defense may be looking out for a pass coming up. Here's Luck now on second down. And that's complete to the right side. It's Allen. And down inside the 15 he goes. We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Here we go with second and seven. Strong left, strong left. Hey, watch On second down, here's Long. Now he's got his target. It's caught for a Colts touchdown. T.Y. Hilton from 10 yards out. And the Colts add on to their lead. And that'll give them a two-score lead here, but I'm looking ahead. They just want to hold it for the final moments here in the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, it almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and carry it into the second half. Now after the touchdown, here's Pat McAfee to kick. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk this is a big decision here. This is Bell on the dump off. <laughs> and he's brought down. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime.
So the offense has it first and 10. On first down, it's Roethlisberger. Out left here, it's complete to Wheaton. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Fresh set of downs here. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down, finding time. And he's got his man on the comebacker. Ten yards on the pick up there, and it's good enough for a Pittsburgh first down. As if he didn't have enough to think about on that route, the comeback route, coming back to the football and catching it, so to make sure he toe-tapped and kept himself in bounds. And that was spectacular, but on the comeback route, maybe a little easier to deal with the sideline since you, you've got better vision of it? I think that's a great point because you should know exactly where you're going and know how much space you have and make sure you get your feet down. But yeah, coming back to the football, I like it. Good vision. He was looking to hit his running back, Le'Veon Bell, that time. That'll bring up second down. That was close to a big play and just a little bit too far that he was led. He caught it but couldn't stay in bounds, Charles. Yeah, I'm not very good at these sort of things, but I have to believe the farther you are downfield, the less your margin for error in throwing the ball, correct? Yep. Yeah, so they gave it a good effort there. Really tried, just couldn't complete it. And on second and ten now. Second and ten. It's Roethlisberger once more. Who nearly picked. Almost intercepted, but he couldn't hang on, and it's third down. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way, so he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. On third down, Roethlisberger surveying the field. He gets it to Brown, complete. And brought down, but not before he was able to break the tackle, and the extra effort moves the sticks. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. He hit his first one, this from 44 yards out now. And Boswell's kick is good. And a second field goal here cuts their deficit to 14 to six now. So a field goal here, they're still down, but they put a dip into that lead before the break. And that's got to feel good, because now they've seen that they can put some more points on the board, and that gives them a whole second half to get back to where they want to be, and that's in the lead. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This one fielded at the five. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we have reached halftime here in what's an eight-point game. As we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? This will be taken in at the one. Boy, shifts past him. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> Show them one thing, hit them with something else. A pick up there, 37. And the Colts are going to have a first. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this, but run after the catch ability, rack ability, is often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. down it's score and he will cross the 30 down to the 29 yard line it's a pickup of four and it'll bring up second down well, if you're a football guy that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there obviously the guy carrying the ball but how about the people up front leverage athleticism they created some nice space for him and after the play on the ground that brings up second down here To throw on second down is Locke. Over the middle here, it's Hilton. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. In my book, that's running the ball well, but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end of the half situations that you worry about the clock. It's throughout the game. And with a lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. So he runs it for one yard, then no gain. I don't know that you go back to that well here on third down. Yeah, I don't know that you do as well, but if you want to get the ball to him, if you want him to have it, maybe you get him into space and throw it to him. The Steelers insert their nickel defense on third down. Yeah, they add a DB. Here's Locke. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Dante Moncrief, a 20-yard touchdown. And the Colts are able to grow their lead. And they use that height on the outside to get the score. We've seen the evolution of the wide receivers. They've gotten taller and taller, but they've retained their quickness and their speed. It's a lethal combination. Always good to have wide receivers with height. Now after the touchdown, here's Pat McAfee to kick. This is fielded at the goal line. And he will be marked out right there at the 20-yard line. A look at the offense now here coming back out on the road for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half, 
Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right big away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. Let's see what they have up their sleeve. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 35. A solid gain of 15 yards in the sticks move. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. He's got time in the pocket. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. Okay, that incompletion gives me a chance to get your thoughts on Cleveland. Is there a win on that schedule for the Browns? I think that there is, because I just don't see this team as an 0-16 team. There is talent there. Obviously, Joe Thomas at left tackle and Joe Hayden at corner. I mean, they've got some players on the squad. But the bottom line is, when you have this bad momentum going, how do you reverse it? You know the game I'm identifying? San Diego coming to Cleveland Christmas Eve. Long trip, warm weather team going into the cold of Cleveland. That could be the one. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. The quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. The 15 yards through the air on a first down. There's no doubt about it. That's just one of the best connections in the league. Big Ben throwing it to Antonio Brown. And Antonio Brown has turned himself into such a player. A low-round draft pick, but you can't beat his determination or work ethic. And Big Ben welcomes that. And Big Ben won a Super Bowl at 23. Youngest ever to do so. Has never looked back. Roethlisberger with a give to Bell. And a cutback to the sideline. That one goes for 36 yards. Good, strong, explosive run that started inside, which means you've got to control those defensive linemen, the defensive tackles, the nose guards. Those guys have to be controlled. How about the offensive line, the job they just did? Yeah, key that A-gap usually on those runs, right? That's where it all starts because everyone wants to kind of control that area. It disrupts things from the defensive side and the offensive side. As we just saw, it opens up possibilities. Now Bell. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. They come out here in the eye. On second down, it's Bell. And he'll take this one down inside the five to the three. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Well, as the play call comes in on third down, you have to think about four down territory here. Down a few touchdowns, they need points, and they need big points. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. Third and two, now Roethlisberger. And that one's going to be over everybody in the back of the end zone. It's incomplete. Now they've got to be a little frustrated here to not complete that on third down after having such a long drive going. I mean, you're talking about going over 70 yards on the drive. Yeah, did you say a little frustrated? <laughs> Very frustrated. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Very frustrated. There's no doubt about it. They thought they were going to have a chance to cash in in the end zone. Now it looks like it's likely a field goal attempt. And Boswell's kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So give them three there. A good drive gets them inside the five, but they couldn't punch it in. And credit this defense, too. That was the old bend but don't break approach. But it kept the offense out of the end zone. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This fielded at the two. Oh, look at the juke. 
And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. And the Colts getting ready to go. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Give them three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. It's a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. And he's going to get hit at the line of scrimmage and driven backwards. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it's going to make it third down and six. Well, you know that old expression, it's not my night? It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Now Locke firing quickly here, and that's complete. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? So frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. And here's carry number 10 for Frank Gore. And he'll get this up to about the 40. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. On the draw, Luck gives the goal. Spinning past him. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Offense lining up first and ten. Three down, three down. Gore back there is the lone setback. And he'll get it up the middle. And he's brought down. Now the Steelers put a stop to the action with a timeout defensively. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Gives to his running back, Gore. And a decent game there as that takes us to the two-minute warning. And the Steelers signal for another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So we've got a second and five. And Luck hands this one off to Gore. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout. So as they talk things over, we'll step aside.
So it'll be first down here after the run. Now a handoff for Gore. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. No matter what defense is called versus a running play, linebackers are telling the defensive guys up front, you take care of the offensive line, keep us uncovered, let us run to the ball, we'll make big plays. Well, that paid off there. All the guys up front, the big fellas, they controlled the five offensive linemen. That allowed the linebackers to see the openings, sprint through the gap, and snuff that play out in a hurry. Robert Golden, the one who got him down. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. A nickel back added defensively as they look to stop this third and eight. And well, they could just run this clock out, but here is the field goal unit on fourth down. From the right hash, it's a 46-yard attempt. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Colts are winners as we say so long.